Hi, Dave Anderson here. I want to thank you for taking time to be with me this morning. We're going to talk about Lightroom and some basic editing techniques. Um, before we get started, though, a little housekeeping. I have the audio muted for all of you, as well as I've got the chat box open. So please, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the chat box. That'd be great. Now, I want to thank everyone for continuing to be a wonderful customer of the camera company. And through these trying times right now, our store hours are basically Monday through Saturday from 9 until 4 p.m. The phones are open. Someone's there to answer them. And if you need something and you've got an order over $50, we'll ship it to you for free. Otherwise, we can arrange for some curbside pickup. And uh, we do appreciate your business. So don't be a stranger. Give us a call. So this morning, what we're going to talk about is primarily editing in Lightroom. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen right now. Let's bring my Lightroom up. Okay, we should have Lightroom live there for you to look at. Now the deal is, is that most people want to be able to crop and straighten an image, as well as do a little exposure and contrast adjustment, maybe fix their white balance, and they're happy at that point, and they can go on and, and make some prints. Now, in a previous two episodes, we talked about importing and organizing, as well as exporting for both social media as well as for printing. So you might want to check out those two videos. They are archived on the Camera Company YouTube channel so that, uh, that you can see and catch up. And uh, you know, if you've got questions, we hope we have those answers for you there. And through the next few weeks, we're going to be doing more of these same types of videos to uh, help you improve your Lightroom skills. So we're going to jump right in. The first thing that people like to do is crop and straighten their images. So I am going to go to crop and straighten. I've got a, a collection set made with some images here that we can work on. And I've also made my pointer here on my mouse large so you can see where things are at. And you'll notice in the upper right hand corner there is a little box here. And if you hover over it for a second, it might not do it with this cursor, but it should say crop and straighten tool. It does, it just says underneath. There is a crop and straighten tool here that allows you to do exactly that, crop and straighten an image. I'm gonna click into the second image first. So here is the deal. When you click on that, it opens up a dialog box. This dialog box allows you to adjust your aspect ratio. That's the relationship between width and height. You can adjust the angle of the image. So if your image isn't straight, you can straighten your image. And uh, also, it has some presets built into it for different image sizes. So if I click on the little arrows here by the word original, I can now look at different aspect ratios. So let's say I want to make a square print. I can use the one to one aspect ratio. Now that's probably not going to work too well for this image because my image won't fit in that area. I can do a four by five or make an eight by 10. And you can see it's eight across the top and 10 down the side here. If I want to change that from portrait to landscape, the X key on your keyboard, just hit the X key once, and that will rotate it from being portrait to landscape. So the X key is your friend here. It's gonna change it from portrait to landscape. And then you can, of course, size the window the way you would like, and then move your image into the area that you want it to be in. Now, one of the things that happens a lot is people will shoot in the standard two by three aspect ratio that the camera comes, it's its native size. And I'm gonna go back to this first image. And what you'll see is that that image was shot to almost fill from edge to edge. So if I wanted to make this an eight by 10, I'm gonna come down here and just select eight by 10, you can see it pulls my edges in. Now, if you're shooting family portraits, I always suggest leave a little bit of room because you don't want Aunt Bertha and Uncle Bob to be cut out. Unless you don't like them, put them on the ends, they can disappear. But most of the time, you want to get the whole family in there. And the only way around that is if you filled that frame from left side to the right side is to do fit to print, and then you're going to get a white bar at the top and a white bar at the bottom. And most people don't like that. So think about it 
when you're shooting portraits or uh, of group shots, leave a little bit of float around the edges. That way you can crop it the way you want it and it makes it a lot easier for you. But you can see here that the different aspect ratios have different height to width. So if I come back and do a one to one, which is a square, I cut a lot off. If I want to do it as a four by five or an eight by 10, and I'm going to hit the X to rotate that, and I'll pull this out a little bit. You can start to fit that in there, but I'm coming really close to the edges. If I do a five by seven, a five by seven aspect ratio is even different. So a five by seven would work better than an eight by 10 because it gives me a little bit of room to crop. If I wanted to do this four by six, which is the original way that was shot, and I can pull that back out to the edges, Actually, let's come back up here and do this. We're going to go back to as shot. That'll pull it back out to the edges. And then you can print four by sixes with this without any problem at all. Now, most people don't want to print four by sixes on everything. They want to adjust it. Now, what happens when you get that image that is not going to work as a five by seven or an eight by 10, but maybe you want to do a panorama? Lightroom allows you to come in and create custom sizes. So you just come down to inner custom and it gives you the aspect ratio that you want. So I wanna make this one 48 inches wide by 16 inches tall. So what I wanna do is make a nice panorama out of this. When I hit okay, it gives me a boundary box that is of a 48 by 16 aspect ratio. Well, let's use the rule of thirds. You can see that this is even designed to show you the rule of thirds. I'm going to put that uh, lighthouse a third of the way in, and we're going to say done. And there we go. We've now cropped that to a 48 by 16 inch aspect ratio. Makes it nice and easy. You can change it, make it any size you want. Let's say instead of 48 by 16, you want to do a, let's open it up again. Let's say you want to do something that is uh, 60 inches by 12 inches. So one foot tall, five foot wide. You can see how it makes it nice and narrow. And now you can go and make a longer panorama. So the idea is, is that you're not locked into just doing two by three, four by six, um, eight by 10, five by seven squares. You can do whatever you want. It's nice and easy. Now the second part is we've cropped. Now let's talk about straightening an image. To straighten an image, and we'll use this one because it's kind of fun to use, we can straighten this image by going back into that crop and straighten tool. And if you put your cursor just outside of the boundary box, you can rotate it back and forth in order to straighten your image. That's one way of doing it. Now you've got to eyeball it this way, and that kind of works most of the time. A second way of doing it is to come in here and use this slider, and you can then rock it back and forth, or you can come in and actually type a number in. So I want to make sure, let's say it's 10 degrees positive. I don't know if I like that. Let's make it minus 10. So minus 10 or 10. So you can see that you can then also put in a number and make that work. My favorite though is this tool that they've developed, which is like a spirit level. So you click on the, the little spirit level. Now you can drag that to two points on your image, let go, and it will straighten it to those two points. Let's say I want this stem of grass to be vertical, if I drag it this way, it'll make the stem of grass vertical. So it works on 90 degrees. So you can either do it horizontal or vertical. It's really a neat tool, works really well. If there's nothing there that you like and you want to start this whole process over again, just use the reset inside of the crop and straighten tool. And what that will do is that will undo any of your cropping 
or straightening edits that you have done to the image. So you can then put it back to exactly how it was as you shot it in the camera. This one, I have no idea why I did this. I took a whole series of these just goofing around with some bokeh one day. I kind of like the fact that they are, are both at opposing angles. Again, there's nothing here that is a right or a wrong answer. This is all personal choice. What you want to do, the image you want to, per, to uh, portray to your viewer, this is your art, this is your vision, you make it how you want. I just want you to see how these tools work to do it. So crop and straighten is a really, really helpful tool inside of Lightroom. You can again access that by clicking on the little crop and straighten icon here. The menu drops down. You can choose your aspect ratio. You can adjust your angle. And when you're all done, you just click on the done at the bottom. Or what you can also do is click on the tool again, and that will close the window up. So that's how you crop and straighten in Lightroom. From there, most people want to do some basic editing. Maybe the exposure wasn't quite right. Now I know the people that are watching this always get their exposure dead on. So I will, uh, I will not lie. This one, I was, uh, my exposure was off. And uh, it was in a series. Fortunately, a couple other ones were better. But here's the nice thing. If you shoot in RAW, now JPEG gives you some latitude. But by shooting in the raw format, and we'll go into more detail about raw and JPEG formats in a future video, but by shooting in the raw format, what you're allowed to do is move five stops either way. So plus five stops, it's basically pure white. Minus five stops, I'm almost totally black. So if I put it back to where it was where I shot it, and remember, each stop is doubling or having the amount of light. So basically, by going one stop down, that's half the amount. Two stops down would be four times the amount. So this particular image at about one and a half stops, somewhere in there is about where I would want to be. So I'm able to salvage a picture that, that was otherwise, you know, nothing that was all that great shakes and, and uh, the exposure wasn't quite right. Now I want to show you one of my favorite tools here, and that is at the bottom left here, you can see this little YY. When I click on that, what that's going to do is give me a before and after side by side. So if I click on it a second time, it will split the screen. Click it a third time, top and bottom, third, fourth time, a split top and bottom. By putting them side by side, you're also able to make your adjustments in real time and watch what happens. So anytime you want to reset a particular group of, uh, that you're working on, you can double click on the name of that group. In this case, it'd be tone, and that will zero everything back to how it was shot. Otherwise, if I had made a bunch of adjustments here and only wanted to uh, reset one of those, I can either double click on the name of that adjustment, in this case exposure, or I can double click on the slider and that'll take me back to how it was shot. That'll take me back to zero. You can see how the whole, I messed around with a bunch of different settings in here. Now if I double click on tone, it resets that whole set of tools. So this makes it really easy for you to make adjustments and if you don't, see something you like, you can always undo it easily and get it right back to where you want it to be. So let's do that again. Let's take a little exposure out of this one and take a photo that was pretty much useless and turn it into something that you can use. I want to come over to this next image. I've got, I'm going to actually get out of here and just go back to a full frame. If you want to go back to the full frame, you'll notice down here on the bottom left, this little icon shows you the full frame. This one is going to show you the side by side, the before and after. So I'll go back to full frame. Sometimes it's very helpful to break an image up into different zones, if you will. If you look at the histogram up here in the upper left hand corner, or upper right hand corner, the left hand side is going to be your blacks. Then you've got your shadow area. Then you've got your mid tones, your highlights, and whites. And if you look down here, basically those are all represented by sliders also. 
So in this particular image, I like my sky. If I were to take my exposure and just take my exposure up, I lose my sky. I don't want to lose the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my shadows. And I can also take my sky back a little bit and therefore make a slight adjustment overall to bring the image more closely aligned to where I would like it to be. So I'm breaking this image up into different zones from just pure black, pure white, and then highlights, shadows, and mid-tones. So that allows me to work on this image in a way which I can then control and not lose my sky and then not have to worry about this being all plugged up. I can go in and change it um, uh, by, by breaking up into the different zones. And you can watch what happens in the histogram as I make this change. So you can see how the histogram is sliding left and right as I adjust my exposure. You can see how my highlights are sliding as I adjust my exposure. And you can watch how the shadows are impacted as well as the whites and the blacks. Let's come to this next image here. We've got a sparrow sitting in a trumpet vine, a little snow on it. What we're able to do here by breaking this up into these different areas is also make sure we're getting a full tonal range. And to do that, I can click on these corners. You can see that these corners have little up arrows. If I click on them, you can see they get a little white line around the outside edge of them. I can now take my white slider, and if I move my white slider to the right, what I'm doing is I'm increasing the exposure there so that what is happening is I'm blowing out all my highlights. There is no detail in those highlights now. That is all just pure white, paper white. If you were to print this, it would be paper white there. And you probably don't want that because it would, might not look quite right on your image. I can also do the same with my blacks. By moving that slider to the left, you can see how now I've got blue on the face of the bird and in the upper right here on some of the branches. So a lot of times what I would do before I send something to, to print, I will check to make sure I haven't clipped. And what I'll do is I'll just bring my highlights back just to where they disappear. And I'll bring my blacks back just to where that blue disappears and that disappears. And what this can do is give me a nice full tonal range when it hits the paper. Now, in this particular case, I might want to actually bring my exposure up a little bit more because I want to see some more detail in my bird. Uh, with that happening, I'm going to definitely take my, my highlight slider and maybe my white slider and bring it back a little bit in order to preserve my, my highlights. So one of the things you might want to do before you send an image out to be printed is check that. Now you can do that by either clicking on these little boxes up here in your histogram to see where it's at, or you can, let's hit the letter J on the keyboard. One tap on the letter J turns those on. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and blow those out again so we can see what's going on here. And one tap of the letter J turns that off. So the letter J will toggle your clipping and what that will do is show you where you may or may not be clipping your blacks or your whites. So I'm going to just bring that back so it's just underneath. And I'm going to bring back my whites just so that that red disappears. And there we go. Yep, just a little bit more. There we go. So it makes it real easy for you to check whether you have an image that is going to have the black's all plugged up because it's just going to put black ink on the paper and you'll see zero detail there. Or that your whites are going to be all blown out and you'll be at paper white and uh, you're not going to be happy with those results. Most people like to, to make sure that you're just right at the cusp of that. Gives you a nice full tonal range. Lightroom also has built in kind of a fun little feature, which they have it marked as, let's reset this one, there we go. Uh, which is called auto. So once I am in the uh, develop module here and we are looking at that, under tone, there is, as you can see right at the tip of my little finger here in my cursor, the word auto. If I click on that, what that's going to do is automatically try to adjust the image for me. 
So that made Jake look a lot better. Now from there, what I may do is come in and make a few more adjustments. And what I may do is I may give it just a little more exposure. If I want to check my clipping, I can click the letter J and I can see nothing is clipped. I don't see any red and I don't see any blue. If I want to try to enhance my blacks a little bit, while that's on, you can see just in the further, the blue is starting to come in. So we don't want to go too far. And the same thing with white. If we go too far with the white, you know, it's not gonna make any difference there because there are windows and reflection on a floor. But we wanna make sure it's not in the fur and all of a sudden you can't see any detail in Jake's fur. So the last thing I'm gonna show you today is dealing with white balance. Let's put this one in a, well, let's actually, first off, let's straighten this one up. We're gonna grab that little angle tool. I'm gonna to use the edge of this bookcase to straighten it up much better. Now I'm gonna put it into a side-by-side -side situation. And what I'm going to do is I can adjust the, the white balance and do that by taking my temperature slider and sliding it up or down. I can also use my tint slider and it could be a lot of work to try to figure it out. So I'm going to do this. I'm gonna reset that by double clicking on the WB, which is white balance. So that takes it back to how it was shot. I'm gonna grab this sample tool, and I'm gonna come over here, and I'm looking for something that is a neutral gray. And one of the easy ways to look at that too is also by looking at the numbers that are being portrayed at the bottom of, of this pick target, where I'm showing an RGB, I'm showing the red, green, and the blue percentage in that particular color that I'm sampling. And when they're all pretty close to being the same, I've got 43, 42, and 55. I'm a little bit hot in the blue, but not too bad. Maybe let's move it over here and see if we can find something a little closer. You know, at the end of the day, this is probably gonna be just fine. There we go, well, right in there. So I'm going to now click that and sample that. And what that's going to do is, automatically adjust my white balance for me. So when you're out shooting, one of the reasons you want a gray card with you and you take a shot of the gray card under the lighting conditions is that by shooting that, you can then use that in order to adjust your white balance. And then you would know that you'd have to adjust everything in that group you shot to 4,400 and plus 12 on the tint and the temperature in order to correct your image and get the white balance back to the way you want it to be. Another way of doing it is to shoot your subject with a um, color checker. This is a um, color checker that uh, X-Rite makes, and they also make software which will allow you to do profiles to make sure the colors are exactly right. But if you're just looking at white balance, if we were to take the sample tool now and put it on a neutral gray and click on it, it will automatically adjust the white balance for me. That one wasn't too far off, but it still made some adjustment to it. And where this comes into play is really important, and let's go back to a full frame. When this comes into play and is really important is because, for example, this particular building on the campus, I shot straight up because I like the fact that I have three different color temperature of lights. All those pillars and the ceiling should be the same color, but I've got daylight up at the top, I've got some other light in the middle section there, and down the bottom I've got incandescent light, and all three of those light sources are making the image look different colors. And there are ways to go in there and color correct that. We're not gonna get into that right now, but the idea is, is that it's important to carry that gray card with you so that you can go back in and color correct your images or know what is a neutral gray in your image where you can click on it and uh, use that. So for example, I'm gonna come back to our pup in the grass here. And if I grab this tool again and bring it in and dog's noses are normally gray or black, you can see how much color correcting that image is gonna do for you. And I've got a before and after there now, unfortunately, it's given me the before all the way back before any adjustments were made to it. So color correction can make or break an image. And if you don't like what you see, again, feel free to come up. 
and adjust it how you want. We can really make that grass green. We can make it purple in honor of prints. A little purple rain on that one. Um, you can you can adjust it however you want. But anytime you grab this, come back and sample that nose again. And it will fix the image for you. So we've gone over how to crop, how to straighten. Make sure when you're cropping that you're thinking about your aspect ratio and you create a custom aspect ratio if you don't find one you like. The X key will toggle you from, let's just go right back to it here right now. The X key will toggle it from a portrait to a landscape. So make sure that you're getting the image cropped exactly the way you want it. When it comes to exposure, when it comes to exposure, uh, you can do overall and do contrast adjustments, or you can break it down into five zones, black shadows, your mid-tones, which is the full exposure here, your highlights and whites. If you want to play with texture and clarity, which we really didn't get into, but we can talk about those in the future, um, they are there for you. And most people at this point are done, and they will then export their image for either social media or to print. So I hope this was helpful. So let me get out of this real quick. And again, we want to thank you for your business and um, let you know that we are going to archive these videos for you to come back and reference in the future, as well as share with your friends. So we've got one out there right now that we've done during our, our Stay Safer at Home for how to import and organize. And we've got a video that talks about exporting and uh, using uh, for both social media and for uh, printing. This one's basic editing. Next week, we're going to talk about using uh, virtual copies as well as collections and how to go in and, and uh, make those very, very beneficial for using across different modules in Lightroom as well as I do a lot of portraits and I'll show you how you can then help your customer not screw up when they go to print their images by um, making sure that the crops meet the different sizes that they want to print. So we'll have that for you. Again, thank you for taking time to be with us today. Go make some great photos. And in the meantime, remember to check us out on Instagram, like us on Facebook, Follow us on YouTube by hitting that subscribe button, and then there's the little bell down there that you click on that, and it'll ring every time we put a new video up there for you. Again, thank you very much. Keep taking some great pictures, and we'll see you on the next video.